Hi there, uh, welcome to uh, part two, uh, or the second video of uh, the Macbeth X-Series Micromac uh, D demo. Um, we're going to play around with the unit, uh, concentrate in this video, particularly on the oscillators and their features. So, uh, let's get on with it. Okay, uh, so what we have here is uh, a Korg Prophecy with its uh, three octave keyboard, uh, pitch bend and modulation wheels. It's a favorite uh, uh, MIDI controller, uh, compact MIDI controller keyboard that I like to use. The MIDI is going out to the Canton built-in MIDI that's in the Micromac D and uh, it's also going to this uh, Kenton Pro 4, which uh, I'll demonstrate what that does with the three oscillators in the Micromac uh, shortly. Um, I've got a waveform generator here. Really, it's uh, in synthesizer terms, it's very much like a fancy LFO. Um, it's capable of very high frequencies, capable of very low frequencies, um, it features a sine wave, a triangular wave, and the square wave output. This is, uh, the sound of oscillator one. That's it. Uh, in its sawtooth mode. Square mode. Triangular mode. sine wave mode. Okay, uh, the second oscillator features the exact same waveforms. The third oscillator features the same waveforms plus two more. One is an inverted saw and one is uh, pink noise. Very useful when uh, oscillator 3 is being used in modulation purposes. Anyway, let's bring another uh, oscillator up, oscillator 2. Oscillator 2 in unison with oscillator 1. Let's bring number 3 up. That's the sound of uh, three oscillators in unison. Amazing to get three oscillators in such a, a small and compact shape. One of the things I'd like to do, I'm going to turn down oscillator three and I'm going to change oscillators one and two to a square wave. <laughs> Love that sound when two squares are uh, almost in perfect tune. Given a bit of glide, it's great fun. <laughs> just detune this a little bit more. Here, and crank it high. OK, 
Okay, we're going to take the glide off there. Now, I've got um, oscillator 3 on a sawtooth there, but I'd like to drop it down an octave, so let's hear. is off, that's good. I also want to turn these into saws. Let's detune oscillator 2 slightly. We've got tracking on the, uh, we actually got the, the full tracking on the filter just now. Oscillators, um, we can uh, do thirds, fifths, and things. So let's do that. I'm going to turn three down a bit. It's nice with that beefy. Oscillator 3 at the bottom of this sound. Because of the three oscillators, you can get that sound. You cannot get this from uh, a two oscillator synth. You certainly couldn't get anything near it with a one oscillator uh, synth. So that was uh, very important to me that I could put three oscillators actually into this thing. So you've kind of heard the audio of the oscillators there. Uh, we're going to look at the modulation uh, capabilities of oscillator three and how it affects the, the rest of the synth. So, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, show some of the Oscillator 2 in its sync mode. First, uh, I'll show you Oscillator 2 being swept by the, the filter envelope. So, here's Oscillator 2 with Oscillator 1 as we left it. So the filter envelope is just sweeping oscillator 2 there, so now I'm going to put the hard sync on where oscillator 2 is synced to oscillator 1. Bring a 
Apple Slayer 3. Switch and release off. modulation that you're hearing here by the way is coming from the uh, LFO that is uh, built onto the Kenton MIDI as is the pitch bend and uh, even switched in portamento so you've got uh, uh, effectively two glides one on here and one built into the MIDI. Um, anyway, what I wanted to show now was how Oscillator 3 can cross-modulate Oscillators 1 and 2 and how they cross-modulate the filter. Um, so let's uh, start with os modulating Oscillators 1 and 2. So here we have a typical... <laughs> So I move this switch up. So at different points on the keyboard, we have different speeds of oscillator three. We have this switch here on oscillator 3 which makes it go even lower frequency. So let's just check that out. Still, the keyboard is determining the the speed of uh, oscillator three, but we can kick it out. And when we take oscillator three out of the audio path, it now is quite an independent LFO. Let's put this to typically triangular waveform. going to take uh, from this function generator down here into uh, VCO CV3. Um, let's turn this down a sec. So there is your typical sound. Now, I've got a uh, low frequency coming out of this function generator, which is going into the CV in here. Let's see what it does to VCO3. So external modulation going into CV3 will cause it to speed up and slow down while it's modulating, which is nuts. Let's turn oscillator one to a sine wave. This 
function generator is quite amazing. Okay, I'll just take that out there. Um, so, as you can see, oscillator 3... ...controls the oscillators that way. Next thing I'd like to look at is... Um, ...is the uh, oscillator 3 control... Uh, um, Modulating the voltage controlled filter. A bit of noise in there as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, that's the uh, filter oscillating, and we'll crank the speed up, uh, in fact let's just put this uh, oscillator 3 back to an audio rate. Let's take off the envelope because that was sweeping it. Versus a sine wave. And if I'm crazy, I think I'll introduce a little bit of LFO 1 just for fun. It's the uh, sample and hold. I think I'll use a bit of the uh, noise on here from here. Coming a bit unintelligible, but it nonetheless interesting. Let's take that off. Hello, fools again. Lots of it. This is the thing with uh, demos. There's so many things you can do with it that one just gets carried away. I've taken a relatively slowish frequency from the function generator. I'm going to 
plug it into the pulse width of one. See what happens. Plugged it into the micro my car instead. Come on, guy, get it right. So you can achieve pulse width uh, modulation via uh, LFO2 direct into oscillator 1. Stop this. Okay, I've uh, disconnected uh, MIDI from uh, the MicroMac D and I'm just fitting the last uh, patch cable. Uh, this is taking three channels of CV to the three CV inputs that uh, you see here. One gate coming out, that's coming from channel A. Uh, we don't have three sets of uh, envelope filter uh, controls here, it's just one, so it receives one gate. Now, this is, uh, I, I want to show what is called triophonic uh, synth synthesis. Um, so we can, I'm having to strike that three times, there's only one gate, but they're in unison. So now we can play uh, chord, chords. take off the uh, release because it's more percussive this way. So imagine that in a desktop uh, synthesizer, you can play real chords. that um, it, there is a technique to playing this you cannot uh, maybe the term is legato you cannot um, play it like the way you would play a piano precisely you have to play f three note chords if it's set to three note but nonetheless <laughs> Okay, um, that's the end of this video. It's been a bit more extended than I thought it would be, um, but uh, there's one more to follow because we've got to look at some of the other features in here. Thank you very much for watching.